Hello everybody, welcome back. Uh, we're out in the backyard again today. Um, what a difference a couple days makes. It was, oh, 72 degrees here on Monday and a couple days later, here we are, it's 31 today. That's the high, been going, getting down in teens and 20s at night. And uh, got me thinking about a post we did on Facebook about this time last year uh, about carrying some bare necessities with you when you're when you're heading out to hunt and I thought I'd talk a little bit about that today so um, the people that are getting in trouble most of the time in the outdoors are obviously the people that are out there all the time all right the hunters and the fishermen and the hikers uh, they're the ones you see all the time getting lost uh, getting injured uh, or, or whatever the case may be and um, many times when that happens uh, they're not prepared for it uh, you know a lot of times they just maybe throw a sandwich and a water bottle and a camera in the bag and they take off for the woods for a while and something bad happens and, and they're they're just not ready for it so um, keeping this geared towards the hunting side I, I know a lot of you guys out there that are hunting, you're you're already carrying a bunch of gear, and you know, in my mind, you're carrying some of you are carrying way too much gear, uh, but that's fine. Okay, if if you're comfortable and you're used to using all the scents and calls and gadgets and geegaws, that's great. Uh, keep doing it, but uh, keep room in the pack for some essentials because you never know. When Murphy's going to rear his ugly head and you find yourself in trouble. So, um, the big three uh, that we want to talk about are water, shelter, and fire. Okay? Uh, find yourself in trouble and those th three items, if we just keep it at those three, is going to greatly up our odds. Alright, so what I prefer to carry. Uh, for shelter because it's light uh, It's easy to throw up and doesn't take that much room in the pack is I've got a military poncho in there along with a couple of tent stakes So I don't even have to make stakes and a 550 cord so I can throw it up quick for overhead cover and then I've also got the um, What they call the escape bivy from SOL And it's got the Reflective lining in it, but in this case the bivy is breathable so you can uh, crawl up inside the bivy and you don't have to worry about uh, the condensation building up so much with it and um, You know in and up cold in the middle of the night anyway. So uh, I have tried that out And it does work pretty good now again. That's only one layer All right, so shelter wise you also need to be thinking about the clothing that you're wearing all right and that clothing needs to be based on the worst case conditions for that time of year. So what I'm getting at is, like I said at the beginning, Monday here it was 70 degrees. If I'd have just, you know, threw a day pack on my shoulder and headed off into the woods with what I normally carry when it's 70 degrees out, and then I got injured, I would have been in a world of hurt because it dropped down to 25 degrees that night and then it hasn't warmed up since. So I'd have been out in the woods uh, in pretty bad shape, all right? So you wanna think layers, and you wanna think enough layers for the worst case conditions that time of year, all right? So right now in my area, uh, it got down to 18 degrees last night, or I should say by the time the sun came up, early this morning it was 18 degrees. Um, so I'm gonna wanna have probably you know, a base layer, uh, a couple layers of socks, obviously, um, along with my regular clothes. And then I'm probably going to want, uh, and what I've also got in the pack is um, Gore-Tex, a nice thin Gore-Tex pants and jacket for uh, a shell, for an outer windbreak and uh, water barrier. All right. So think worst case scenario. So that takes care of shelter. We've got appropriate clothing, uh, and we got some overhead cover and a baby bag to jump into. Um, for water, I keep things simple, just like I've talked about in uh, the other videos. Um, stainless steel water bottle with the cup that goes with it. 
and then for gathering more water, I have been using the uh, Aquamira Frontier Pro straw, just the water straw, but I recently picked up the Sawyer Mini, um, and I really like it. If you take care of it, uh, it's pretty much going to last you forever. It's good for 100,000 gallons. So even if you did the about a gallon a day drinking water, and you use this every day, it's going to outlast you if you take care of it. So it comes with the filter itself, um, a 16 ounce uh, collapsible bag for gathering the water and then squeezing it through the filter. And then it also comes with a um, plunger, like a syringe, um, for taking care of the filter itself. So once you use it, you blow some clean water back through it and uh, keep it cleaned out, keep it back, um, back from it. So that takes care of water. I got water on me and I got a way to make more water when I'm out in the field. Um, like I mentioned in one of the other videos, my hunting area has a spring fed uh, creek in it. So um, very easy for me. I can, you know, interrupt my hunt for a couple minutes to go over the creek and uh, give me some more water. And then fire. Uh, you guys have seen this knife before in the other videos. I carry a fire kit on here that's a magnesium rod with a ferro striker. Um, and I've also got a thumb striker in a tin along with some uh, tender quick tender cubes all right, for getting the fire going. Beyond that, in the pack, I've also got a lighter and I've got a film canister with some uh, cotton soap or Vaseline soap cotton balls. All right. So I've got a couple of different ways of making fire on my person and in the pack. Also, always on my person, I've got a big lighter in the pocket, just in case. All right. So we've covered the big three. We've got water, we've got shelter, and we've got fire. Okay. Now beyond that, this is hunting season. Um, I don't have any personal property to hunt on, uh, private property, so I'm typically out on uh, public land, uh, conservation areas around here. And just for an example, last year uh, on opening morning, when it was bright enough to see, I looked around the field and I counted 17 other blaze orange vests around this field within my line of sight. I had probably a good 200 meter line of sight one way and 400 meter to the left. So if anything would have stepped out there that morning, and which luckily didn't, it would have been like World War III, everybody trying to shoot at once. And uh, you can see where I'm going with that. There's, there's the potential for uh, getting accidentally hit in the middle of all that. So um, you're going to want to have during, especially hunting, but even if you're just going out on a day hike with the family, you're going to want to have a decent first aid kit with you. All right. Uh, I know we should already be carrying the bandana, which I am. I've got a, a schmog in here. Uh, and this time of year, it's going to be wrapped around my neck. So, you know, it's a sling, it's a pressure bandage, it's a tourniquet, but um, it's good to have some actual medical supplies with you. In this case, uh, I've got a military type IFAC, individual first aid kit, uh, that's uh, augmented with some quick clot. Um, so it's designed to take care of a gunshot. Okay. Uh, and that's really what you need to be thinking during the hunting season, especially. Going out with the day, you know, on a day hike, uh, you might want to consider some, some other stuff, but uh, for hunting season, you know, as much as it sucks to think about, uh, you need to think about taking care of a gunshot. All right. Um, something else, and maybe we should have started with this, is planning a little bit ahead of time. So before you head out on your hunt, what I like to do is uh, I've got a copy of my map that I'm going to leave at home. And I'm going to take a post-it note, and I want to make a note where I'm hunting at, you know, showing this is the area that I'm hunting at, um, this is what time to expect me home, and this is what time to call the authorities if, I'm, if I don't make it home. All right, so for example, I might say expect me home by 5 p.m., um, if I'm if I'm not, 
give me until 7 p.m. and if you haven't heard from me, then call call the authorities. All right. So give yourself a little bit of wiggle room because uh, if you're like me uh, <laughs> and you have the same luck I do, uh, you're not going to get a shot until uh, you know shooting light is almost gone, and uh, then you got to go tracking in the dark for for a deer. And my hunting area doesn't have the best cell coverage, so. Give yourself a little bit of wiggle room uh, before you have somebody calling an emergency that, that really isn't one. Okay, um, just be sure that you're leaving that plan with somebody uh, responsible that's actually going to going to carry through with it, not forget about it, and also somebody that's not going out there with you. All right. Um, I did read one story where a guy, single guy, trying to do the right thing, uh, left a plan with his buddy. Um, he was going to go on, a, uh, I believe it was a day hike. Um, his buddy decided, hey, that's not a bad idea, and he went on a day hike too. Uh, as it turns out, the first guy did get in trouble, ended up stuck in the woods for the night, uh, and the other guy completely forgot about it. Spent a great day outdoors, got home, didn't even think about it. So make sure it's somebody that's responsible enough that they're going to follow through with your plan, all right, just in case. Now, if something does happen to us and we get stuck out there for tonight and our plan becomes implemented, searchers are going to be on the way at some point, okay? Um, so we're going to need some way to... Let them know exactly where we're at. Now your plan should have a general area. This is this is where I'm hunting, or this is the trail I'm hiking, or whatever. Um, but to get them zeroed in to where exactly you're at, you're going to need some way to signal. Uh, so I know a lot of guys just have the ammunition in the rifle and, and maybe a couple extra rounds, but I tend to go ahead and carry some extra ammo. And what that is for is not so much hunting. It's it's for signaling all right so if something does happen to me and I know that searchers are in the area either I'm hearing car horns or helicopter or whatever I know searchers are out there and I can give them three gunshots in a safe direction you know, don't point the gun in the direction you hear the searchers calling for you um, another backup to that once you do start actually hearing voices and stuff probably don't want to keep shooting the gun um, have a whistle with you um, in this case, this is one I've had probably since before I got in the Army, and it's just a referee whistle. All right, they're really loud. Um, or you can go with something more high speed, like a, you know the Fox 40 or something like that. All right, but have a good signal whistle with you, so um, you can get that in. The other thing you can do, like I say, if there's aircraft and it's daylight, is um, on my compass that I prefer to carry, it's actually got a mirror, all right? So I can use that mirror to signal aircraft. And that brings me to that. The other thing you need to have on you is a notebook, a map of your hunting area and a compass, and you need to know how to use all these things together. I'm, I'm not going to go into great detail on that right now, um, but one of the things you can, you can use the notebook for is to actually leave some notes behind if you feel you do have to move, all right? Um, maybe you realized you were lost, right? And you decide to go downhill so you're near a water source for the night or, you know, you see in the distance a, a good spot where you think you want to take shelter for the night or whatever, all right? You can leave notes around your area and uh, point searchers in the right direction, okay? Now, all of this together really doesn't weigh all that much. All right, you could configure something like this to include these items in your personal hunting pack, whatever the case may be, uh, or your day pack if you're you're hiking instead of hunting, or even fishing. All right, anytime you're outdoors, just be thinking of the big three. All right, shelter, water, and fire. All right, they're the big three. Um, beyond that, most everything else is icing on the cake, but um, 
please, before you just grab your tree stand and your rifle and head off in the woods for the day, uh, please consider at least getting the big three in there, if not, you know, all the other stuff we talked about. So that's about all I got for right now. Uh, until next time, stay safe, get out there and practice your skills, and good luck hunting season.